So um, I'm standing here with Pavel Kabat, who is uh, the chief scientist of WMO and, uh, and also the director of WCRP. And we are at the International Conference on Regional Climate Modeling for Cordex here in Beijing. Uh, so Pavel, you just told us at, uh, at the beginning of the conference today here that uh, WCRP has a new strategic plan. And I would like you to say a few words about that and how that relates to the activities within Cordex, please. Correct. Thank you for having me here. WCRP World Climate Research Program is a program which is 40 years old, and it is uh, what I would call in football terms Premier League of the Climate Research. It has been coordinating and helping uh, in overall the climate research discourse over the last 40 years. And it was very successful because uh, the IPCC reports, for example, so far were all based on WCRP findings and WCRP type of modeling then. However, the climate discourse moved to the stage where we have an overall awareness of the problem and we start to think in a more integrated way. We call it earth system thinking. Because of that and because of the WCRP undergoes uh, every 10 years a review, the three sponsors of WCRP, which is WMO, International Ocean Council and the International Science Council, commissioned a review two years ago. And the question was, is the World Climate Research Program still fit for the purpose of the 21st century, where more action-oriented research is needed, but also where the boundaries between disciplines and between sectors needs to be more seamless. That uh, review revealed that uh, WCRP may need to be a little bit more focused and more integrated, more earth system type of approach. And, but also, it also reviewed that the relevance of WCRP as a, in, an international uh, research program to the major uh, challenges of the climate discourse, what I would call like providing the regional uh, high resolution uh, climate data for applications in the adaptation sector or in the uh, disaster uh, re uh, reduction and prevention sector needs to be improved on that. In that context, one of the foci will be a regional climate information of the WCRP in the future. It will be uh, both the fundamental science which is still needed to be done to understand better and to be able to uh, model better the regional processes. But at the same time, it will also have to reach out more to the stakeholders, to the users. And this is where I believe the Codex and Codex Partners challenge lies for the future. I think Codex is one of the shining examples of um, being responsive to the need uh, to put together a more consistent portfolio of the climate information on the regional scale. But it's, uh, quote, quote, just climate information. And I think the, the society and the communities are asking for more in the near future. They're asking about uh, full chain impact assessments. And I think the times where the climate community just calculated the uh, input data and left it on the shelf, so to speak, for others, the times are over. So we need to come to a more similar thinking. We need to reach out to the communities of impact modelers, but also of the social, economic, institutional transformation models. This is called a, a called uh, impact-based modeling. And for that, we need to engage more on the uh, partnership with science, uh, social science community, for example, but also with the economic ones. Um, I hope that the Cordex community will be um, uh, willing to face this challenge of transition to more. I mean, there is absolutely expectation that there is more of the Cordex type of information needed. But as I said, it will have to be in a more integrated uh, earth system seamless way. There is a one more thing I would like to say. It's about time scales. I mentioned in my lecture today that um, the climate issue is becoming also economic issue. Every year, last 10 years, the World Economic Forum in Davos concludes that weather and climate and water are the most important threats of the future economic development and sustainability as well. Uh, in that particular context, uh, we need to uh, have uh, information which will be supporting of such a, such a, such a economic um, value of the climate information. So it's also um, partnering up with the um, stakeholders, designing the experiment with the stakeholders, doing that uh, from very beginning together, core design of the experiments. So it's really reaching out of the comfort zone, so to speak, uh, to the zones which most of the climate models haven't entered yet. Okay, that sounds very good and interesting and challenging to us also. But I also think that we have already started along that path for some, at least in some context. In we have some big projects in Europe and also elsewhere where we have already started to work with stakeholders. So, so how and sometimes it's di very difficult to reach out. So, do you have a good recipe for how can we reach out even more and integrate in an even better way? You know, um, 
if I would be standing on the other side, I would say the same because I'm also a scientist and professor. I have been part of more than 30 European projects. But since I entered WMO world, I can tell you there is a huge divide between the real operations and the infrastructure which operations are having. And um, on one hand, on the other hand, the, what, what we call a so social relevant research which scientists are doing. For example, large part of the academic community, which is uh, connected to the climate research, is almost entirely disconnected from the uh, so-called regional climate center, which are doing all the assessments for the climate applications. So we need to build a bridge. And that bridge is called Science for Service, which we are, of course, mastering in the weather prediction, weather forecasting then. I think the climate community should enter also that space, being more connected to the service type of it. It will not go easy because we still have the culture, we still have our own systems, our own credits, our own benefits from the different approaches there. So for example, the WMO, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to talk to the major players across the world to establish so-called Science Innovation for Operation Fund, Trust Fund, in which these new partnerships between academia, research institutions, university groups, on one hand, on the other hand, the operational institutions in the member countries will be supported. Uh, for example, in Sweden, I know Swedish uh, landscape quite well. There are a number of funders which are funding, like Mistra, like, uh, like um, um, I forgot the name. Of, um, it could be the Environment Protection Board, for instance, or the Formas, Formas which as, as an example, and, and others which of course have a particular target of funding fundamental research. There is other ministry funding SMHI kind of operations. And of course, throwing money on the different constituencies and hoping they would find each other is not a way to stimulate innovation cycle. This is, by the way, situation in my own county in Netherlands as well. So how to build a kind of triangle between the academic funding and academia which are getting this funding, doing excellent research because here is doing excellent research. On, on the other hand, the whole need in, to innovate in the operations. If someone gets money, for example, to study artificial intelligence and applications in water sector from formats, how that research project could be connected to the uh, need of imp input AI into the operational system, for example. So those new partnerships we would like to develop a little bit more. Okay, that sounds very interesting and this is one of the big challenges to, to all of the regional climate modeling com community and I would say also to the global climate modeling community to some extent. I mean, we are working with research and we are producing scenarios, but there is a, there is a production moment in this that is more operational and not really research and it's di very difficult to get the funding. So what is your view on that? Can WCRP help here somehow and how can that go? Definitely, and this is a very important question, it's a matter of accountability as well, because, you know, we moved uh, in the climate uh, research from the uh, nice to have play around scientific uh, research into the very responsible job, supplying the society's economies, political stakeholders with the climate sen information scenarios, which is becoming an asset. It's become political asset, economic asset, even legal liability asset. So we need to be serious about uh, the quality assurance of the data we are putting on the market, so to speak. This must be a completely, we call it waterproof information. Currently, we are somewhere in the middle. We are mixing the scientific curiosity project of my of your PhD student with production of the very highly weight uh, information for, for example, IPCC. I think this is uh, this is this needs to be resolved. So the climate community, in my view, should learn from the weather forecasting community, which is doing uh, this information more systematically. Let me give you an example of the European Centre in Reading, right? They have a research version of their model, which is sitting comfortably parallel to the operational version. The research version is the version where all the improvements coming from the science community are being tested. And once in a while, once a year, once in two years, the frozen version of the operation model is opening up and swapped to the new one. In this case, you have a guarantee that you are doing operations based on the same standard, same starting conditions, not mixing in between execution type of thing, and you can still innovate. While climate community is, is doing things in a very ad hoc way. If I look at the ensemble CMIP, it's everything mixed together. It's the development of new models, it's the development of new parameterizations, it's generations of the scenarios, it's climate sensitivity issue which needs to be understood, it's ensembles and it's publication. And I think this is a dangerous way to follow. We need to sort of split. So my proposal was to the WMO Congress, which uh, met last June, 
to take more ownership of the production side of the climate scenarios by simply generating enough support, infrastructure support for data processing, quality assurance, operational, for, uh, operational scenarios. And again, in parallel, the research part will be still supporting new development. That's fine. But the mixing uh, kind of unclarity, I think, is a very dangerous way to go. So we are trying to put on WMO members, which are the med services of the 197 countries, a kind of responsibility for the portfolio of helping us to assure sustained funding and sustained support for the production of the climate scenarios. This goes for both CODEX and CIMIP. And there is a resolution which we passed uh, by 197 countries in uh, Geneva last uh, Congress in June, which is asking Secretary General and a couple of uh, key leaders of WMO to come with a proposal by the next June how this can be done. So it's very concrete. Okay, thank you very much, Pavel. Thank you.